Right, this is a blind quick look. I saw this and just installed it and just fired it up. I've got no idea what I'm doing here. It's free. Welcome to Bitburner, a cyberpunk themed incremental RPG. The game takes place in a dark dystopian future. Oh really, like the one we're heading into in the real world now, eh? But the year here is 2077. This tutorial will show you the basics of the game. You may skip the tutorial at any time. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. Um, let's start by heading to the stats page. Click stats on the main navigation menu, left hand side of the screen. Stats shows a lot of important information about your progress, such as your skills, money and bonuses. General, current city, sector, money, stats, hacking, strength, defense, dexterity, agility, charisma, multipliers, hacking chance, hacking speed, hacking money, hacking growth. Lots of multipliers here. Miscellaneous, servers owned, hacknet nodes owned. So let's head to your computer's terminal by clicking terminal on the main navigation menu. Terminal is used to interface with your home computer as well as all the other machines around the world. So you've got a terminal here. So let's try it. Start by entering help. And then you press enter. Bad command. Please follow the tutorial. Um, help. Displays a list of all available terminal commands, how to use them, and a description of what they do. Let's try another command. So you've got all that there. Backdoor, by, cat, cd, directory, check, clear, cls, connect, download, free, hack, help, home, hostname, run, scan, and all that kind of stuff. So let's try another command that says ls. Don't know if that's listed here. ls dir, display all files on the machine. Uh, ls. There's only one. It's a basic command that shows files on the computer. Right now it shows that you have a program called Nuke on your computer. We'll get to what this does later. Using your home computer's terminal, you can connect to other machines throughout the world. So let's do that now by first entering scan. Shows all available network connections. In other words, it displays a list of all servers that can be connected to from your current machine. A server is identified by its host name. That's great and all, but there's so many servers, which one should you go to? So you can type in uh, scan analyze, spell it right, shows more detailed information about each server that you can connect to. It is also possible to run scan analyze with a higher depth. So let's try a depth of two with the following command. So you go in uh, scan and minus two. Now you can see information about all servers that are up to two nodes away. As well as figure out how to navigate to those servers through the network. You can only connect to a server that is one node away. To connect to a machine, you use the connect command. From the results of Scan Analyze 2, we can see that the Noodles server is only one node away. So, um, yeah. The noodles server. So 
So this is where I put in scan and lies too, so it scrolled up, up, scrolled down a bit. The noodle server is listed up here. So how do we know that these are up to two nodes away? So how do we know that the noodle server is one node away? That's noodles. Yeah. So let's connect. Connect noodles and we're connected to another machine. What can you do now? You can hack it. In the year 2077, currency has become digital and decentralized. People and corporations store their money on servers and computers. Using your hacking abilities, you can hack servers to steal money and gain experience. Before you try to hack a server, you should run diagnostics using. So we're in noodles now. Analyze. Finishes running, it will show useful information about hacking the server. For this server, the required hacking skill is only one, which means you can hack it right now. However, in order to hack a server, you must first gain root access. The Nuke EXE program that we saw earlier on your home computer is a virus that will grant you root access to a machine if there are enough open ports. So analyze shows that they there do not need to be any open ports on this machine for the new virus to work. Required number of open ports for nuke it says zero. So go ahead and run the virus using the run command. So you run nuke Exe. Nuke successful. Gain root access to noodles. You can hack the server using hack. You are now attempting to hack the server. Performing a hack takes time and only has a certain percentage chance of success. This time and success chance is determined by a variety of factors. Failed. Including your hacking skill and the server's security level. I've gained 0.825 hacking experience, but it's failed to hack it. If your attempt to hack the server is successful, you will steal a certain percentage of the server's total money. This percentage is affected by your hacking skill and the server's security level. The amount of money on a server is not limitless, so if you constantly hack a server and deplete its money, then you will encounter diminishing returns in your hacking. You will need to use grow and weaken. So I'm going to hack again. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, grow. Uh, no, I've got to continue up here. From any server, you can get back home using home command. Let's head home before creating our first script. So you just type home. Hacking is the core mechanic of the game and is necessary for progressing. However, you don't want to be hacking manually the entire time. You can automate your hacking by writing scripts. To create a new script or edit an existing one, you can nano. Scripts must end with the dot script extension. Let's make a script now by entering nano noodles dot script. This is the script editor. You can use it to program your scripts. Scripts are written in a simplified version of JavaScript. Copy and paste the following code into the script editor. So they want you to copy and paste. For anyone with basic programming experience, this code should be straightforward. This script will continuously hack the server. If you're an intermediate programmer, you should use NS2 instead. It is much faster and offers more possibilities. To save and close the script editor, press the button in the bottom left or press Control B. So you can just press Control B. Now we'll run the script. 
Scripts require a certain amount of RAM to run and can be run on any machine which you have root access to. Different servers have different amounts of RAM. You can also purchase more RAM for your home server. To check how much RAM is available on this machine, you enter free. We have eight gigabytes of free RAM on this machine, which is enough to run our script. Let's run our script using your run noodles script. Your script is now running. It will continuously run in the background and will automatically stop if the code ever completes. The noodle script will never complete because it runs in an infinite loop. These scripts can passively earn you income and hacking experience. Your scripts will also earn money and experience while you are offline, although at a slightly slower rate. Let's check out some statistics from our running scripts by clicking, oh, clicking active scripts. This page displays information about all your scripts that are running across every server. You can use this to gauge how well your scripts are doing. So let's go back to terminal. So I've got a tutorial here. Not sure I can move, move the tutorial window. But it's kind of in the way. Um, there it is. The script is running. One minute, seconds, total online production, and hacking XP is there, gradually going down per second. Let's bring that back. Go back to terminal. One last thing about scripts. Each active script contains logs that detail what it's doing. We can check these logs using the tail command. Do that now for the script that we just ran by typing tail noodles script. The log for this script won't show much right now. It might show nothing at all because it just started running. But check, again, check back again in a few minutes. This covers the basics of hacking. To learn more about writing scripts, select tutorial in the main navigation menu to look at the documentation. Even if you, if you know even a little bit of programming, it is highly recommended you use NS2 instead. You will enjoy the game much more. For now, let's move on to something else. Hacking is not the only way to earn money. One other way to passively earn money is by purchasing and upgrading Hacknet nodes. Let's go to Hacknet. Here you can purchase new Hacknet nodes and upgrade your existing ones. Let's purchase a new one now. So this is Hacknet nodes. You just purchased a Hacknet node. This Hacknet node will passively earn you money over time, both online and offline. When you get enough money, you can upgrade your newly purchased Hacknet node below. Let's go to City. Uh, let's take a look at this. Did I purchase one? This page lists all the different locations you can currently travel to. Each location has something that you can do. There's a lot of content out in the world. Make sure you explore and discover. So we have got World Stock Exchange, Icarus Microsystems, Universal Energy, Rothman University, all these different places, Travel Agency, Blade Industry, Joe's Guns, Mega Core, City Hall. Lastly, click on Tutorial. This page contains a lot of different documentation about the game's content and mechanics. I know it's a lot, but I highly suggest you read or at least skim through this before you start playing. And that's the end of the tutorial. Hope you enjoy the game. 
So you have soft reset and restart tutorial. You've got getting started. Servers and networking, hacking scripts, traveling. Ah, uh -huh. so then that opens up that opens up a browser. On traveling. Oh, the um Ah, here we are. Traveling companies, infiltration, factions, augmentations, and keyboard shortcuts. So uh, beyond that, you're on your own to try and figure out how to do things. Scripts. Yeah. Bring up the start screen. Hacknet node. Travel, which brings up a uh, map. Tokyo but a ticket costs a lot I don't have the money I don't have the money to travel anywhere yet there's milestones and there's options net script exact time net script log size terminal capacity the auto save interval I've noticed the autosave. Um, increase that. Save game, delete game, export, import, force kill all active scripts, soft reset. Resets everything as if you just purchased an augmentation. Diagnose files. If your save file is extremely big, you can use this button to view a map of all the files on every server. Be careful, there might be spoilers. Theme editor. So I think that's um, about it. Uh, taking a quick look at Bitburner version 110. Yeah. There's eight gigas of available RAM. You type in PS. No scripts. And it's free. I uh, put a link in the description down below. And see you next time.